All right, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you some advanced UI and UX techniques, which will basically enhance the way users interact with your Bubble IO applications. So in the first one here, we're gonna show how to use multi-step forms to create a better sign-up flow for your customers. So users input their email and password, they go next. Tell us about yourself. I love reading, for example. Go next again. And then we have the upload profile photo, upload their image, and then they go ahead and sign up. So let's show how to create this. So in this video, guys, I'm not actually gonna go through the exact details on creating it. As I said, it's a bit more advanced, but I will show you in depth on how to actually do so. So we have a group form here. On that group form, we have a custom states, which is a current step. It's set to a number and the default value is one. Now on this actual group form itself, we have a type of content set, which is also a number. And let's go to the layout tab here. And as you can see, we have this element visible on page load. It's ticked, that's for the group form. So now we have three groups inside here, as you can see neatly on the left-hand side, guys. We have group one, two, and three. This is basically how we're gonna reference the different groups and when to show and hide others. So group one here, we have a condition which says when group forms current step is one. Now back on the layout, we have unticked this element is visible on page load, meaning that when the page is loaded, this element will not be visible. And we have it collapsed when hidden, which means that when it's collapsed, sorry, when it's hidden, it'll be collapsed and it'll allow the other elements to actually form and look really good inside of the group. All right, so now we have that set here. We have three different groups inside of this group. Let's actually show how we navigate to the different groups. So when button next is clicked, basically all we're doing here is a one step workflow and it's setting the state. So we're setting the state here. The element is the group form. The custom state is the current step. And all we're doing is saying the group form, so the element, the custom state we set plus one. And that's all we're doing like that, guys. And I'll show you why we're doing that. So if I go ahead and hide group number one here, remember, as I said, when group forms current step is one, this element is visible. So if I hide that and go to group two, now it says when group forms current step is two, this element is visible. And now let's go to the workflow here. So when group one is visible on page load, the default value I've set on the form is number one. So what that means is when we go next, it's doing a one plus one calculation, one plus one equals two. And then when the, uh, when the group forms current step is two, show group two. And now we have another little thing here, guys. So it's a back workflow. So let's go to the edit workflow on the back and we're doing the exact same thing, except all we're doing this time is subtracting one. So when back is clicked, two take away one is one. When next is clicked, one plus one is two. So let's hide group number two now. And I'll show you group number three. And basically all this says is group forms current step is three. This element is visible. Press back edit the workflow and we are simply subtracting number one. Basically that's all it is guys and I'll show you the step by step. So right now it's number one, so group number one is visible. Let's add in an email and a password. We press next, does the calculation, one plus one equals two, group number two is shown. We go back, two subtracted by one is one, group one is shown. We go next, we're now at two, we go next again, two plus one is three, group number three is shown. We go back, three take away one is two, group number two is shown. We go next, and then from there on, we can go sign up and you can create your workflows and onboard a user as you would. And that is a really easy and clean way to set up a sort of advanced user flow for your Bubble LIO applications. All right, now we're gonna talk about how we use uh, conditions to filter and show and hide different groups in your pages so that you know it's fully responsive on mobile. And I've already done previous videos on this guys in depth and showing you how to actually set it up and you know create the desired outcome. But 
in this video, I'm just going to show you a rundown of how we have it set up and, you know, saving us time. So as you can see here, we have a dashboard page and let's right click and let's go inspect. Let's close this, let's minimize this. All right, and now we can actually change the different screen sizes. So as you see up the top here, we have a 1440, which is a normal laptop. We then let's go down to a 1024 and that sizing is fine. As you can see right now, if we still get smaller and smaller, uh, you know, and we didn't have any conditions set, this element would not be right. It would be squashed, the elements would be squashed, the groups wouldn't line up and it would literally be an unusable experience for the end user. So let's keep going down. Let's go to a tablet now, 768. As you can see, if we have four columns here, we go down to 768, we then have two and two. So it's changed. So instead of four across, it's two stacked on top of each other. And then we go down to 425. We then have changed again to, instead of two and two stacked, it's now uh, one column, but four rows. So we have one, two, three, four, we go down. It's the same on the product side of things. One, two, three. Same with the sales, we have all now stacked vertically. And then if we go down again to the smallest screen size, 320, as you can see then, our buttons have also changed. So they're on the same line, the overview text of the products and settings buttons. We then go to the smallest, they have now collapsed underneath and everything is stacked in the column layout. Pretty rare that you're gonna find a mobile size still that someone uses a 320 guys. It's like a very early iPhone. And uh, most people cater to the 375 for the mobiles these days. As you can see, it's the actual like template setting in the Chrome developers tab. So let's jump over to Bubble and show you how we achieve it. So our default view here on this group is a condition here. So what we're saying is when the current page width is less than 576, we're changing the left padding and the right padding to 16 and 16. This is all bootstrap standard. I follow a bootstrap standard with a four point design system. So 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, you get the point, four point design system. So what we're saying is when the 576 page width is less than that, we are changing the left and right padding. We're then going granular again inside of the groups and saying when the current page width is less than 992, the min width is 100%, meaning that this group will spend 100%. And we also have the same set out here for this group right. And then what will happen is because it's set to a row, and once that condition is true, so the page is less than 992, these will expand to 100% width. They will both expand to 100%, pushing them underneath each other. And then on the product section here, we have the same thing. So on this group section, all we're changing now again is the left and right padding, bootstrap standard. And on the product section here, this is how we were uh, changing you know, the layout and the columns. So we're saying when the current page width is less than 992, we want two columns. Right now we have three columns. And then we're saying again, when the current page width is less than 576, we're changing it to one column, which is allowing for that stacked uh, vertically. And then on the recent sales here, guys, we're doing the exact same thing um, on the repeating group. No, on the, this group here. Yep, we're doing the same thing really. When the current sales index is one, this element is visible. And we actually don't need to do this for this group, guys, as it's a repeating group, it's already done for us. So how do we know, you know, what actual sizes to go by? So if you go to the responsive tab in your bubble app, we have a few different things. So we have a 1200, we have a 992, as you can see, it's getting a bit snug here. And then as you remember, we have some conditions set on a 992. You can see on the left hand side of the page, let's bring this one uh, pixel down and some things will happen. See like that. We got a 990 and it collapses to a two on two column layout like this. We go again, get going. Our next condition is 576. So let's go all the way down to 576. One below, one pixel below. As you can see, we then collapse into the uh, one column, four row layout for all of our groups here, guys. 
and that is how you use uh, dynamic conditions to filter your bubble like app to make it usable on all screen sizes. It's just really a must have. And it's literally, if you're gonna have an app on mobile, you need to do this, you need to get good at this. It's a must have when developing a bubble. All right, this is gonna be how do we use reusable elements to save time when creating new pages in bubble. Basically, a reusable element is something that can be reused over multiple pages. So uh, a common use case for this is a nav bar. As you can see up here, we have a nav bar where I can hit log out, takes me back to a page. So that nav bar is obviously gonna be used in multiple different pages. Therefore, we do not need to create it for every new page. We can simply create it once. And as the name suggests, a reusable element, then we can reuse it in different pages without you know creating it. So. I'll show you back in my application editor here. We go to the top left and we have here web reusable elements. As you can see, we have a nav bar and I have a basically set up nav bar. Uh, so all a nav bar is really, is just like a group. And I have it set to a floating group here. So it floats above top, above elements as you can see. And then inside, I simply just have some padding for design purposes like so. So I'll show you actually how we go about making one. So I'm gonna do a new page here. And let's just call it nav bar again. And from here, let's go add a, re add a new reusable element and let's call it nav bar two. And then I'm just gonna show a quick example, guys. There's gonna be no design or anything here. I'm just gonna make the min height 80. Default builder width, we'll just say 1400. Like that. Make the background color a flat color. And let's make it our purple, our primary brand. So we've made this navbar here. And for most navbars, you want it to be a floating group. So it sits above the elements instead of uh, sitting actually on the page. So when you scroll, what this will mean is the floating group will stick to the top as if it was a normal group, it would scroll with the page. So let's hit floating group here and let's go above elements. And so you can change it so you can go above or beneath the page. And with these, with these now are reusable elements, you can set type of contents. You can uh, make them fully dynamic as well. So you can set a, you know, obviously nav bar is probably going to have your brand logo and then uh, avatar that's logged in with a log out button. And then you can set the dynamic actually on the avatar. So you can set the dynamic user and you only need to do it once. So it saves you a whole lot of time when developing. And then let's go back to our newly created page. Let's go test here. And let's make this a 1400 default builder width. And then what we can do is scroll down. And as you can see on the left hand side, we have a new reusable elements drop down. And we have navbar two. Let's place that in just like that. As you can see, it's perfectly matched up to the new page, except here we have an issue. And the issue is when we're using nav bars like this, we need to set a margin on the group that we're actually, that's already on the page. So we know that the height of the nav bar is 80. So we know the margin that we need on the group logout. We need top margin of 80, just like that. And as you can see, it lines up perfect. And you can do that on like a different pages as well. So we can go to anything. We can go to this one here. And then let's add the nav bar in again, just to show you. Just like that. So we can use it across multiple elements. So you edit it and design it once, and then you pretty much copy and paste it across all your applications. That is how to make uh, reusable elements in Bubble, specifically a nav bar. So let's move on to the next section and we'll keep going. Another thing you can do is actually called a focus group. So you can add a group focus here and you can anchor it to an element. So the reference element could be the, let's say, what's this, the group avatar. Let's go group avatar. And as you can see, then it anchors itself to that. So basically a focus group is like a drop down element. Uh, it's another way of say you're on mobile or you want to drop down the three little hamburger menu icon. You can then add different things to this. So let's add some padding. Let's add this, add some text. I'll 
show. And then all we need to do here is if we were to preview this, and we need to go to the dashboard page. So I need to quickly run as a user. I've got, got privacy rules on guys, so. Go to the dashboard page, if it's gonna work for me. <laughs> go dashboard, loops, here we go. And we press that. We just need to quickly do a workflow here. So when this group is clicked, what are we doing? We're showing an element. That element is gonna be the group focus A. Let's go back. Let's give this a refresh. And when this element's clicked, as you can see, that focus group is shown just like that. That's how you can stack elements in a focus group and you know add for a nice drop down menu from a nav bar, a reusable element, or any sort of thing like that. So that is sort of for uh, advanced UI and UX design tips, guys. I have videos across my channel that go in depth into how to actually create this effect. This video was more just showing you a list of all four and how you can use them. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Leave me any ideas that you want me to see, that you want to see from me. I'm happy to do whatever you guys want. Subscribe to my weekly newsletter. You'll get sort of nuggets and uh, actionable tips and tricks in there that you don't see on my YouTube channel. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.